Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today. I wanted to start with some housekeeping items. Um, we are going to have a Q&A period at the uh, end of our session, but we are going to keep that line muted until we get there. Uh, to get into that phone number, please dial 866-506-1209 and use the passcode 920-5709. If you're on the phone and also watching on your computer, please put your phone down and listen to your computer audio. This is because the uh, two signals go out at different speeds and we want to make sure that everybody's listening at the same time. During the webinar, if you have questions, please use the chat function to ask them as we go. And with that, I would like to play an opening message from Dr. Erwin Tan, Director Welcome to today's webinar on creative strategies focused on promoting the third annual Senior Corps Week. We're really excited about today's webinar because instead of hearing just from us here at CNCS, we're going to be hearing from you in the field and your fellow project directors who in last year's Senior Corps Week implemented some very creative ideas that were able to garner immediate attention and reach out to stakeholders. Today, we want to hear about those ideas and have a brainstorming session. We know that not every idea fits all, but we want everyone to be able to reach out and elevate not only the work they do this week, but the great work everyone does every day of the year here and throughout the country. Welcome. All right. And with that, I would like to introduce our working team today. We have Jan Newsom, Office of Senior Corps, Program Officer, Jackie Aker, Office of External Affairs, Director of Marketing and Publications, Ann Bensel, Office of External Affairs, Public Affairs Specialist, Kate Enos, Office of External Affairs, Deputy Press Secretary, and I am Ned Irons from August Jackson, and I am the moderator. And with that, I will introduce Jan Newsom. Hello and welcome to Thinking Outside the Box, our first webinar for this year's Senior Corps Week. Today, we'll give you a brief overview of Senior Corps Week, followed by discussions from the field about unique ways they featured Senior Corps last year. At the end, we'll hold a group brainstorm that we hope will spur your creative juices. You know that Senior Corps Week is a time to recognize your volunteers and to promote the impact that you are making in your communities. This year, we're celebrating the week in May, which is also Older Americans Month. Our thinking was that in telling the story about the impact of Senior Corps at a time when America is already celebrating its older citizens would be a really great tie-in for us. Now, you've experienced tremendous success during the previous Senior Corps weeks. This year, we're giving you new tools to help build on that success to make each year better than the last. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. But now, let's hear from our field colleagues. Terry Gunnell, our state program director in Arizona, will share his story about how he secured multiple proclamations from several community leaders, including the leader of the Navajo Nation. Following Terry, you'll hear from Carol Chase, about the really fun intergenerational flash mob she created last year. But first, as a reminder, if during the webinar you have questions or interesting ideas that come to mind, feel free to use our chat system or simply jot it down on a piece of paper near you. We'll talk about it at the end of our webinar. Now here's Terry. Thank you. <clears throat> Jen, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am um, speaking about the um, proclamations today, and but in the context, as the um, title says, of thinking beyond the governor's office, because um, in the past, with uh, with AmeriCorps Week and um, in the first couple of years of Senior Corps Week, we um, we we did, I think, many of us, uh, many states, very good jobs 
of, of go, going through the traditional route of getting the, um, our state's governors to issue um, uh, proclamations recognizing Senior Corps Week. But um, particularly in the context of Senior Corps Week last year in Arizona, we um, were, were happily informed by some great experiences we had um, earlier in the year with AmeriCorps Week as well um, in terms of uh, reaching out even more broadly beyond um, the, the governor's office. But, you know, part of the reason or that, that we chose to focus on, on the proclamation um, is that they are a comparatively easy way to bring um, Senior Corps Week and the contributions uh, of your Senior Corps volunteers to the community's um, awareness. Um, and they, um, it's a great way to, um, by the process of, 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 of you know, requesting the proclamation and by the process of having it issued by some key community um, stakeholders, uh, it, it's, it's an incredibly effective way to showcase the, the work of your Senior Corps volunteers. And if, it's, um, if, if you manage it properly, um, it, it's a very, very effective way um, to achieve um, some, some real significant and, and broadly amplified results for a, you know, a, a not significant, uh, you know, a, a not, not a great amount of of um, effort, and um, you know the kind of what led us to the idea of focusing on the proclamations um, is that um, we, while we recognize that um, the governor's office is a great way to, to publicize the statewide um, volunteer statistics, um, our volunteers, our senior core volunteers, really are um, active at the local level, at the community level. And, and we wanted to um, begin to get that word out to the um, local level community leaders. Um, and, and particularly, as, as many of us know, um, uh, uh, the, our senior corps volunteers are, are almost always very, very heavily involved in their local community. That's, you know, as, as we all know, one of the, the hallmarks of, of, of the generation of seniors that we have in our programs. They're, they know everyone locally. They know their local leaders. Um, and this is a good way um, for the local leaders to become uh, more aware about them. But we also were thinking about um, you know, the, the, the proclamations in, in the context that um, so often when we think about publicizing our projects, we, we think perhaps of in you know, the direction of of events or, or um, you know, recognitions or service projects or, or, or um, things like that, which are very good, very effective, and very honorable um, activities, but they are, for, um, for everyone, very, very labor-intensive and very expensive. And so um, the, the proclamations um, across a broad spectrum are a um, really good um, and effective uh, avenue for, for Kind of amplifying your impact. Um, so, you know, thinking through, um, you know, how you do this, um, the, the 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 first and most important step is to to utilize the tool that that's already in existence. And if you just will um, follow the link um, to um, www.getinvolved.gov, you'll find the um, um, very good. Uh, template at that location, and uh, you know it's not um, the end all be all. You can certainly um, um, modify it a a a as as you see fit for your local area. But um, once you get the template, the next step that you want to um, to do is to um, localize the information um, to get uh, the information. You know um, about your um, your your you know at the, the the most local level possible um, at beginning at your at the state level, um, which is available um, at, on your um, your state profile um, at um, national service in your state on the corporation's website. And if you can't identify that, um, 
um, you can certainly call your state office and they can give you um, that, that information. But um, the, the, the next screen um, that you see here uh, shows you the exact location on the, um, the Get Involved website of where the template is. And so um, I, I encourage you, you know, very, very um, expeditiously to, to go identify your, um, the, you know, to get the template. Um, and if we can move ahead to the next slide as well, that would be great. Um, so um, you, um, once you get your localized information, and as you're, you're seeing here, the, um, the, the text of the uh, template, and um, you know, where you would want to insert your localized information is generally in the, um, in the second paragraph. Uh, where, it, as you see on the screen, it talks um, um, about the number of, of senior corps volunteers across the country and then references the numbers of senior corps volunteers in your community, or in the state. And again, that, the state information is available um, in aggregate at the um, National Service in Your State um, um, profile. But um, you will, in all likelihood, have your own data for the number of volunteers at your um, at your stations in, in each of the communities. And um, again, the, the more localized you can make the data for your um, for your uh, specific target organizations, um, the, the the better. So your first step is to get the um, template. Um, your, your second step is to begin to um, identify very locally specific data that you can, um, that you can integrate into your proclamation to make it um, as, as effective as possible. Um, the third step that you want um, to do really is, is kind of a brainstorming step. Um, think um, what organizations would be um, you know, good prospective targets, and and I, I think here um, we can you know think very broadly, and that was uh, something I think that um, with AmeriCorps Week last year in Arizona and with Senior Corps Week, we were um, we were really lucky to be able to um, to get some proclamations from not just the governor, um, but also um, a, a, a large number of cities. Um, we were also able to, um, to um, have a proclamation of Senior Corps Week issued by the President of the Navajo Nation, um, which um, it, it occupies a, um, a large section of Northern Arizona as well as portions of New Mexico um, and Utah. Um, and um, we were also able to have some proclamations issued by um, colleges, um, the, the uh, Prescott College, for instance. Um, then we were also able to have some proclamations issued by organizations like library boards, um, a community planning agency, um, you know, some, some other um, entities like that. Um, so think, think broadly. Think, you know, um, you know, fundamentally any organization with a, um, with a board um, and with letterhead is potentially a, a prospect. But particularly the organizations that are served and impacted by um, by senior core um, 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 sites. So you know after you know that step um, of of identifying prospective folks, um, the next step sometimes really is just as you know simple as making a phone call to the organization and using um, municipal or um, cities, for example. Um, in virtually every city, there is a staff person um, whose role it is to coordinate the proclamations. And you know, the, the easiest thing to do is to call City Hall and just simply ask who is in charge of issuing proclamations. And, and there's, um, um, they, they generally have a very definitive um, um, process that they utilize um, to do this, and in some cases, um, it's it's as simple a process as um, as speaking to the staff person, and in other cases, um, it's a little bit more complex. But that's 
um, also a great opportunity to, um, to, to tell your story. And, and for instance, um, um, this past year with Senior Corps Week, I identified um, the, um, the individual with the city of Scottsdale who was responsible for issuing proclamations. And um, for many people outside of Arizona, you think of Scottsdale as a um, wealthy resort community. But it's, you know, it, 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 certainly it is that, but there also, um, it has a, a higher than anticipated um, um, percentage of people who live within poverty in the city and, and has some, some very good um, service activities that um, our senior corps volunteers are involved with. And the, the mayor actually called me back um, and, and asked me for information about the impact of senior corps and national service in their city, which gave me an opportunity to actually go so far as to send him the list of, of volunteers and with, with, with explanations of what they were doing. And so the city of Scottsdale pro proclamation was actually much more detailed than, than some of the other cities and very, very impactful. And um, you know, we're on track to get a, another one from, from them this year. Um, but that leads to, you know, the, it, it's very important um, you know, as you're making these calls and identifying um, the folks, um, understand and recognize that in some cases, um, you know, the city can, can turn it around in two weeks or so forth. But in other cases, the organization, you know, the board may or may not meet for a month at a time. Um, so you want to have a clear sense about, you know, what, what the effective timelines are. And then, to recognize that the most impactful proclamation is one that you have in hand in advance of Senior Corps Week. Um, you know, after you know, afterwards, they're, it's very nice and they're effective. Um, but but the, the most effective one is that you have that you can talk about and that you can utilize and that you can build um, uh, outreach and um, and and perhaps media campaigns around. Um, so you know, your next. Um, you know, if you have, you know, think through you know, how you can use the proclamation to spread the word, and um, you know, can you send it to the media, the local media, um, uh, maybe a weekly or, or so forth, as an example of um, of, of activity. But um, um, I want you see on the screen in front of you some some samples of the. Um, proclamations that we were able to get in Arizona last year, um, one from the Office of the Governor, um, another the City of Chandler, and then the one that we were especially proud of, um, which is the, the Navajo Nation. Um, and our, our goal this year, I should add, is to, um, to, to, um, to get um, a, a couple more of the, um, of the tribal um, jurisdictions to issue proclamations as well. But uh, yeah, in addition to media, um, one of our strategies in Arizona this past year was to use social media um, as a way to amplify the impact and the recognition of, um, of, of our um, proclamations. And um, um, we, uh, uh, some of our projects, particularly Northern Arizona University Civic Service Institute, um, uh, did a great job of, of spreading the word through their uh, through their own Twitter feed and then through Facebook. And then um, I, I did a series um, of tweets um, acknowledging uh, each of the, the organizations and thanking them. And then you know, using, um, not, not to go into a, um, a lesson on Twitter, but making sure that I included the right hashtags and the mentions of the organizations in those communities so that um, we would hopefully get you know picked up and retweeted and so forth. And um, I am really pleased to say that in a couple of cases, um, the um, um, the organizations who I mentioned either retweeted my tweet or um, or, or replied and and commented on um, uh, on on the great service of of, of senior court. For instance, it's not on here, but. Um, you saw the proclamation from the city of Chandler earlier. One of the um, the, the uh, uh, city council people from the city of Chandler uh, did a couple of tweets about, 
you know, how important senior core volunteers um, were uh, in, uh, in their community. And, and as, a, as an aside, um, in an article uh, in the Phoenix Republic, or Arizona Republic, about um, RSVP volunteers um, in, in that part of the Phoenix metro area that, that appeared around that time, um, the, uh, the mayor, Chandler, um, got upset because um, their, the numbers for their RSVP volunteers um, weren't, as, weren't correct in the paper. The paper didn't show them um, as high as they should have been, so he, got, um, he was very insistent with the paper that they correct their numbers because you know, they were so proud of their, their RSVP volunteers. So um, um, at this point, um, I, I will um, uh, say that I you know, will take questions later on. Um, in the um, in the talk, and um, I just I want to say in closing, um, we about the the use of the proclamations. We find really not only did it expand our reach and our um, our ability to talk about our programs, it really is truly um, a manageable process um, and and, um, and, a, and an excellent. Um, uh, time investment uh, all the way across the board, and it's something that um, that carries on throughout the year. So at this point, I will um, turn the, the uh, virtual floor over to Carol Chase. Thank you, Terry. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about how we put together the flash mob that we did last year for Senior Corps Week. Um, Last year, we knew that we wanted to come up with something that was different. Our agency has three projects, so Emily Euler of RSVP and Charity Moon of Foster Grandparents and myself got together, and we just started brainstorming. We knew we wanted something that would celebrate our volunteers and showcase Senior Corps as a vital and vibrant part of the community, and we also knew that we wanted to make it fun. So we just started throwing out ideas, you know, what, would, what if we did this, or what would, wouldn't it be fun if we did this? And in that process, uh, somebody threw out, wouldn't it be fun to do a flash mob? And we had actually joked about a senior flash mob in staff meeting, you know, at some time previously. And, but this idea of, of having seniors kind of come out and gather in a public place and start dancing and singing or something like that, that idea just really started to get some traction with us. And so we took it to our director, and he loved it. And in fact, started throwing out more ideas. You know, what if, what if we got the lieutenant governor to come and start it, or somebody, somebody important, or somebody famous? And what if we, what if we had uh, brought students in, or kids, or, or youth, or something? And so we re really just got so excited about it, and decided, well, this is this is what we're going to try to do. And and at that point, we um, all felt really sick because we thought, oh goodness, this is how is this going to happen? And there's so much to do to make this happen. And that's where the three of us working together was really a strength. So there was always one, at least one of us, who would stay positive. But we got down to business and started making lists and dividing up tasks. The key steps were getting buy-in from our agency and from the venue, choosing a song and the dance, organizing and motivating volunteers, getting media involved, coordinating the video. And that really was the most important thing for us, is to end up with a video that we could put on the internet and use perhaps on our website. Buy-in from our agency was an easy step for us. Weber Human Services was great. They were open to allowing us to use the agency video equipment. And more important, they allowed us to use our very talented video editor to put the video together after it was filmed. Um, the biggest challenge that we faced was how to convince our volunteers that they really wanted to do this. So we took a YouTube video of the Do Re Mi train station flash mob, um, and we shared it at our in-service meeting. 
and the volunteers loved it. They thought it was really fun, and, and they were really enjoying the video. And then we told them, well, this is really, this is what we want you to do for Senior Corps Week. And then we promised them that the dance that we made up would be very easy. So then we picked the Farmer's Market as our venue. It's right downtown in Ogden and historic area. It's well attended. It always has a really festive atmosphere. Um, there's a big grassy area in the middle of it. And the biggest plus was they had a sound system that we could play the music through. So picking the song came next, and we really loved the lyrics of the Golden Girls theme because um, it just talked about, you know, thank you for being a friend, and that's really it spoke to us about, you know, what we wanted to say about our volunteers. But the pace of the song was really a little bit slow, so we got on the Internet again and found a remix version of the song on the Internet, and we per were able to purchase it through iTunes. So got the song in. Um, with the song chosen, we moved on to the dance. Uh, our senior centers do a lot of line dancing, and we thought that if we could get some, like, quote, real dancers involved with our volunteers, that they might feel a little bit more comfortable. So we took the idea and the song to our area senior center directors, and as we're playing the song for them, one of the directors actually got up and started doing the dance. She had it down. It was a really super easy four-step pattern um, that's easy to learn and easy to memorize. So nothing complicated, nothing difficult in terms of, of twisting or turning or anything like that. And so at, it was at that moment that we started believing that this was really going to come together. We taught the foster grandparents and the senior companions the dance at two in-service meetings and told them they could always go to the senior center's line dancing times to um, get extra practice if they wanted that. To get the youth involved, Emily Euler, the RSVP director, went to a local high school and she um, got connected with the uh, cheerleading squad and asked them to participate. So group, a great group of kids, they love the idea of doing a flash mob with seniors and they even asked for the opportunity to meet with them before the, before the event. So we arranged one mass practice the day before the event. We bused the students over and had the RSVP and foster grandparents, senior companion volunteers, and we all crowded into our auditorium. It was so much fun having the students with us. And we ran through the dance just a few times, and it ended up being kind of a little bit of a dance-off between the students and the seniors. That was fun. And then we gave them milk and cookies. Um, we had ordered senior core t-shirts with the names of the programs on it so they were really visible and so we thought well we're ready the next day Emily Charity and I met at the farmers market it was still dark when we got there it was cold and misty and the forecast was for scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day we didn't start to worry really until the farmers market coordinator met us with the words if we have an open market today and we thought no 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 if no ifs we this has to go on um, so we worried for about two hours and the sky cleared just in time the volunteers had arrived the sound system was set up the students showed up um, we had three cameras stationed around the site and um, with everything ready to go we just we started the music and went for it so why don't we right now take a, a look at the video. I hope it's always a stay this way. My hat is off, won't you stand up and take a bow? And give your food a party, invite everyone you knew. You would see the biggest gift would be for me in the car. 
right, Carol, you can keep going now. All right. We were thrilled with the results. With the arrival of the volunteers and, and students and family, um, we really had quite a crowd and all the people who were there for the farmer's market. In fact, the farmer's market asked us to come back. Um, they appreciated what we did so much. We got a really nice photo feature in the local paper. It just turned out to be such a great celebration. The students added so much to it. And, and most important, we have this video. So we were able to, once it was edited and put together, we were able to put it up on YouTube. And I, I guess we've had almost 900 views now, so we are pretty happy about that. Uh, this was definitely a learning experience for us. Um, we learned that high school students aren't so scary, and they were really fun to work with. Uh, and we're looking forward to finding new ways to partner with the high school students in our area. Their energy is just so much fun. We're brainstorming ideas for that. We learned that collaboration was key to our success between the three projects. There were so many details and things to think through that we really appreciated having each other to lean on. And we're so much better and stronger when we work together. We learned that working with the media is an ongoing process. Um, we worked on getting the lieutenant governor to participate, and he actually had accepted pending his schedule. And unfortunately, that didn't work out. He turned out to be in an airplane during the flash mob. So he wasn't able to be there. Um, we thought that that would have been a nice way to get broadcast media more interested. But we learned in this process that we need to work on building an ongoing relationship with media, especially broadcast media. So throughout the year, we plan to continue just to reach out with them and help them learn about our programs and the incredible work that our volunteers are doing. So I would encourage you to try it. We certainly would try it again at some point, probably not this year, but um, sometime at some point in the future, we would try that. And, and that's the story. That's kind of how it all came together. Well, Carol, thank you very much, uh, everyone. This is Ann Benzel from the Office of External Affairs here at the corporation. And we were all inspired by her story and the great work that she and her partners did out there in the field. So thank you so much for sharing. I know you're going to have a lot of questions from the field when we get to that portion. Um, I just wanted to tell everyone, if they are not aware of it, we also have some great ideas for events, sort of soup to nuts tips on how to plan an event from everything from the media outreach you need. And they're all available on the Get Involved website. There's a new um, kit called the Impact Guide and Making a Difference for Generations. And it's really an outreach kit that you can use all year round to make sure that you're getting your story out to stakeholders and to the media. And this is Ned Irons, the moderator again. Uh, as a prelude to our question and answer session, um, we had a couple of ideas that we wanted to float out to you all to uh, spark the conversation and um, get your feedback and see if these are some ideas that might uh, benefit your celebration of Senior Corps Week. Uh, our ideas are uh, invite people to be a senior corps volunteer for a day, uh, a local journalist or a well-known figure, someone who could really help celebrate and uh, share your message of impact. The other idea, and people have touched on this with students, but the idea of partnering with seniors to seniors, either with high school students or with college students, and uh, really involving uh, multi-generational uh, service. The last one on this slide is Hosting a day of service benefiting veterans' families. Um, we know that that's a, a very important uh, mission and something that's close to a lot of our hearts, and we thought that that would be a great idea. Um, other uh, sort of more fun ideas, one would be uh, we heard about uh, Carol's flash mob, and we thought about an aerobic flash mob where we could showcase how healthy living and volunteering usually pretty much go hand in hand. Another idea would be to start an oral history project where we talk to volunteers and people in the community about the impact of volunteering and service, and we get uh, individual vignettes of 
really the difference that everyone's making on a daily basis. And then our last idea is having a volunteer open house where in all of your communities, I'm sure that there's a number of places where you're having impact through volunteering and having people tour those, um, again, journalists or uh, local stakeholders would be a great way to uh, showcase and celebrate what you all are doing. Thank you, Ned. Uh, this is Ann again, and I just wanted to remind everybody um, before we go into our question and answer part of the webinar that we have some great Senior Corps Week um, resources for you on the Get Involved website. Um, it's really your hub for everything Senior Corps Week, um, as well as registering for the webinars. You can also find a little Senior Corps Week media kit um, with the proclamation that we reviewed, a template invitation for elected officials, um, we have some great Senior Corps Week materials, which we hope you all, we know a lot of you have already been ordering them and using them. We have a Save the Date postcard. We have a Senior Corps Week poster, which can also be localized to your event. We have decals, stickers, and bookmarks, which all make great giveaways at events. We have t-shirt artwork that you can download or you can link out to a vendor to order your own t-shirts. Um, and we have some web banners that we hope you will um, consider posting on your website. All right, great. Thanks, Ann. And now I believe that we are ready to open up our Q&A session. Um, again, if you haven't dialed in, you can dial into the phone number. It is 866-506-1209 and use the passcode 920-5709. Or you can just pick your phone back up. But what we want to make sure that we do is we turn the volume down on the computer and so that we have a Q&A session just on the phones. All right. So we are going to uh, start with the first question. And the first question will be for Carol. And the question is, from step one through step seven, how long did this flash mob event take to plan? So Carol, when you're ready, feel free to answer that question. I think that we started, um, we had two, two months to, to practice with our volunteers and we actually moved quickly through that first part of it. So I would say Two and a half to three months is how much we had to from start to finish. Great, thank you. Are there other questions from the field? Are we ready for a question and answer? We are indeed. Okay, certainly. The floor is now open for questions. If you do have a question, please press the number 7 on your telephone keypad. Questions will be taken in the order in which they are received. If you are, if you at any point your question has been answered, you may press 7 again to disable your request. If you're using a speakerphone, we ask that while posing your question, you pick up your handset to provide favorable sound quality. Please hold while we wait for participants to queue up for questions. If you do have a question, please press the number 7 on your telephone keypad. It looks like we have a question from Sue Samasco. Sue, you may state your question. Hi, this is for Carol uh, regarding the flash mob. We'd like to know what kind of budget you had for that. Um, we actually spent just a couple hundred dollars for the t-shirts and everything else we, uh, you know, that was pretty minimal in terms of, you know, buying the song on iTunes and things like that. So 
Um, there wasn't any charge at the farmer's market to be there or to use their sound system um, or to use, and our agency provided the video equipment and editing equipment and time that. So it was really pretty inexpensive. Hi, this is about the proclamations, and I was wondering if it's appropriate to ask for a proclamation from U.S. congressmen. Uh, <laughs> that's an um, uh, interesting question, um, um, and perhaps uh, government relations um, might, um, might want to answer that um, more. Uh, correctly than I, but I, I'm, I I'll, will take a stab at um, saying that um, perhaps not a proclamation, um, but what you might ask for would be a letter of recognition, um, because uh, you know um, since uh, 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 a congressman actually you know doesn't have jurisdictional authority over over his area, he just has is a legislative representative, you know, that, that you know, he, he, he wouldn't have, you know, quote unquote, the authority to declare Senior Corps Week in X district, but he could, as the um, as the congressman, um, um, you know, use virtually the same text um, to to recognize um, the the um, the um, Senior Corps volunteers in his district if if. If that's a if that fine fine nuance um, makes sense, and and I and I'm happy to, I'm happy to be to be staying corrected by uh, anyone with government relations who um, um who who um who thinks I didn't get it right, but I, 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 I my 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 recommendation would be um, um you know ask for recognition rather than proclamation from from a um, a legislator. Terry, this is uh, Ann Bethel at the Corporation, and um, I think that's a great question from, um, our, for our next webinar. We will have our Office of Government Relations on board. Um, I do know that we have had members of Congress introduce resolutions around you know, Senior Corps Week or um, you know, on the floor, so that is something that I'm sure our Government Relations Office can help you with at our next webinar. Do we have another question? There are no questions in the queue at this time. Again, if you do have a question, please press the number 7 on your telephone keypad. Great. I have a question for Terry. Are there certain things that we need to know when dealing with approaching Native American nations about proclamations? Uh, um, very good question. Um, you, you certainly you want to know um, the 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 governance structure of the um, of the tribal community and jurisdiction that um, that you're approaching. Um, so just you know certainly so that you know you know what their what their structure is, but also to make sure that you get um, the um, the nomenclature correct. Um, you know because um, um, in some cases the um, the jurisdiction is governed by a um, a, a tribal council. Um, you know, which which may or may not um, ha you know have sovereign authority over the um, the geographic area. In in other cases, for instance, um, you know the Navajo Nation um, is is regarded as a sovereign nation. Um, so you know, there, instead of having a, a you know a um, a tribal chairperson, um, the um, the chief uh, elected officer is is the president of the nation. So. Um, you know, you know, certainly you want to you want to know those those nuances um, and understand you know um, ha how you know you you make the proper uh, uh, approach um, you know to them. But um, you know, basically, um, you know, if if you're working um, with uh, you know uh, with a tribal community, you probably you probably have a station supervisor. Um, who is in all likelihood a member of the um, 
the tribe themselves. And, and I, I would say that, you know, that person is your first point of contact um, to give you um, the guidance on, on how to make the, the proper approaches. Great. I have another question for Carol, and that is, Carol, what are you planning for Senior Corps Week this year? <laughs> Well, we're working on trying to uh, videotape our select volunteers telling their story. We've just had some really powerful things happen and um, among our clients and volunteers, and so we just wanted to be able to just kind of capture some of those really tender, really wonderful stories that, that are happening every day. Great. And Terry, what are you planning this week, or uh, this year for Senior Corps Week? <laughs> um, we are um, our, our, one of one of our goals, which is, I've already started uh, having some conversations with our um, with that, with our project directors about it, to really ramp up the number of um, proclamations um, that we get. Um, we targeted a couple of additional um, tribal communities that we're working with with senior companions, and um, we're also um, going to be really uh, hopefully ramping up our, um, um, the amplification that we do through social media. That sounds great. If there are no further questions, do we have anyone in the queue? There are no questions in the queue at this time. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining the webinar today. We wanted to remind you about a couple of things. Uh, one, we would love to hear your stories. So please share your stories with us at seniorcorestories at cns.gov. We'd love to hear Senior Corps Week stories, but we would also like to hear your other stories about the volunteering and impact that you're creating in your communities. As a reminder, our upcoming webinars, we have one on March 28th at 3 p.m., and that will be engaging stakeholders, social media, media, and stakeholder outreach. Also, on April 11th at 3 p.m., we will be talking about using research to demonstrate your impact. We hope that you can all join us, and that ends our webinar today. Thank you so much. Thank you. This does conclude today's teleconference. We thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect.